to Bible Buddy, um, let's pray. Dear Lord, as we begin to read your words, we ask that you open our eyes, our heart, our ears, um, and teach us your words. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's open up Genesis chapter 20. Abraham moved south to the Negev and lived for a while between Kadesh and Deshur, and then he moved to Gira. While living there for as a foreigner, Abraham introduced his wife Sarah by saying, She is my sister. So King Abimelech of Gerus sent for Sarah and had her brought to him at his palace. But that night, God came to Abimelech in a dream and told him, You are a dead man, for that woman you have taken is already married. But Abimelech had not slept with her yet. So he said, Lord, will you destroy my innocent nation? Didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, Yes, he is my brother. I acted in complete innocence, and my hands are clean. In the dream, God responded, Yes, I know you are innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me, and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband, and he will pray for you, for he is a prophet. Then you will live, but you don't re if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and your people will die. Abimelech got up early the next morning and quickly called all his servants together. When he told them what had happened, his men were terrified. Then Abimelech called for Abraham. What have you done to us? he demanded. What crime have I committed that deserves treatment like this? Making me and my kingdom guilty of this great sin, no one should ever do what you have done. Whatever possessed you to do such a thing? Abraham replied, I thought this is a godless place. They will want my wife and would kill me to get her. And she is really my sister, for we both have the same father but different mothers, and I married her. When God called me to leave my father's home and to travel from place to place, I told her, Do me a favor, wherever you go, tell the people that I am your brother. Then Abimelech took some of his sheep and goats, cattle, and male and female servants, and presented them to Abraham. He also returned his wife Sarah to him. Then Abimelech said, Look over my land and choose any place where you like to live. And he said to Sarah, Look, I am giving you your brother one thousand pieces of silver in the presence of all these witnesses. This is to compensate you for any wrong I have done, I may have done to you. This will settle any claim against me, and your, and your reputation is cleared. Then the Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants, so they could have children. For the Lord had caused all the women to be infertile because of what happened with Abraham's wife Sarah. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This, this happened at just the time God said it would, and Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days later, eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born, and Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yes, I have given Abraham a son in his old age. When Isaac grew up and was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and her Egyptian servant Hagar, making fun of her son Isaac. So she returned to Abraham and demanded, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, Do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you, for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son, because he's your son too. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food and a container of water, and strapped it on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent away her son, and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba. 
Then the water was gone. She put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said as she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying, and the angel of, the, of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies here. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness. He became a skillful archer, and he settled in the wilderness of Paran. His mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. About this time, Abimelech came to Phicol, his army commander, to visit Abraham. God is obviously with you, helping you in everything you do, Abimelech said. Swear to me in God's name that you will never deceive me, my children, or any of my descendants. I have been loyal to you, so now swear that you will be loyal to me in this country where you are living as a foreigner. Abraham replied, Yes, I swear to, to it. Then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well that Abimelech's servants had taken by force from Abraham's servants. This is the first I've heard of it, Abimelech answered. I have no idea who is responsible. You have never complained about this before. Abraham gave them some of his sheep, goats, and cattle to Abimelech, and they made a treaty. But Abraham also took seven additional female lambs and set them off by themselves. Abimelech asked, what why have you set these seven apart from the others? Abraham replied, Please accept these seven lambs to show your agreement. I dubbed as well. And he named the place Besheba, which means well of the oath, because it was where they had sworn the oath. After making that covenant at Beersheba, Abimelech left with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned home to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Bathsheba, where he worshipped the Lord, the eternal God. And Abraham lived as a foreigner in Philistine country for a long time. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son and your son, only son Isaac, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering as on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for a place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood, and Abraham picked up a knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from he heaven. Abraham, Abraham, yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you are, you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me, even your son, your only God. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son, Abraham named the place Yahweh Yair, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountains of the Lord, it will be provided. 
Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says, Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld me from your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of your enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And because you have obeyed me, then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Bathsheba, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Milcah, his brother Nahor's wife, had borne Nahor eight sons, the oldest named Uz, the next oldest was Booz, followed by Kemuel, the ancestor of the Arameans, Kesed, Hazel, Pildash, Jitlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. In addition to these eight sons from Milcah, Nahor had four other children from his concubine Ruma. Their names were Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makkah. When Sarah was 127 years old, she died at Kiraba, now called Hebron, in the land of Canaan, where Abraham mourned and wept for her. Then leaving her body, he said to the Hittite elders, Here I am, a stranger as a foreigner among you. Please tell me, please sell me a piece of land so I can give my wife a proper burial. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen, my lord, you are an honored prince among us. Choose the finest of our tombs and bury her there. No one will refuse to help you in this way. Then Abraham bowed low before the Hittites and said, Since you are willing to help me in this way, be so kind to ask Ephron, son of Zobar, to let me buy his cave at Machpelah, down at the end of his field. I will pay the full price in the presence of witnesses, so I will have a permanent burial place for my family. Ephron was sitting there among the others, and he answered, Abraham asked to the others, listen, speaking publicly before the Hittite elders of the town. No, my lord, he said to Abraham, please listen to me. I will give you the field and the cave here in the presence of my people. I give it to you. Go and bury your dead. Abraham again bowed low before the hit citizens of the land. And he replied to Ephron as everyone listened, No, listen to me. I will buy it from you. Let me pay the full price so the field for the field so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, please listen to me. The land is worth 400 pieces of silver, but what is it between friends? So go ahead and bury your dead. So Abraham agreed on Ephron's price and paid the amount that he had suggested. 400 pieces of silver weighed according to the market standard. The Hittite elders witnessed the transaction. So Abraham bought the plot of land belonging to Ephron at Mapilla near Mamre. This included the field itself, the cave that was in it, and all the surrounding trees. It was transferred to Abraham in his permanent possession in the presence of the Hittite elders at the city gate. Then Abraham buried his wife Sarah there in Canaan in the cave of Mephila near Mamre, also called Hebron. So in the field of the cave were transferred from the Hittites to Abraham for use as a permanent burial place.